Good morning and good afternoon. Welcome to the Weekend Wellness Hour show. Today we have a returning guest who I'm very excited to talk to because she knows a lot about travel, what happens to the body when you travel. And as we go into summer, a lot of people start to travel more. And I've been traveling all over the country and world in the past year. So thank you so much, Dr. Patty Milligan, for joining us today. So nice to see you again. Yeah, thank you so much. And of course, I love this topic, travel. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, and you have quite a background in um, traveling. You had you spent a period of your time where you were traveling quite a bit, but you also have a doctorate in the neuroscience of taste as well, right? Yes, you're exactly right. And um, and I can explain what that is because it's a little unusual. I realize (laughs) (laughs) it is. you know, I'm a nutritionist, a registered dietitian by training, and I and probably much in your work too. It's always so curious if you want people's um, kind of buy-in or compliance to healthier foods. No one really talks about taste. Like, I mean, taste is important, but what happens in the body with taste? And so I sought out a program as I wanted to continue my education, looking at not so much taste and culinary from trying to understand how we love our fat, salt, and sugar, (laughs) but what happens in the brain when we eat bitter foods versus salty foods versus drink liquids that are warm warm and cold. So Mm -hmm. I went to University of Sorbonne and Cordon Bleu for my um, degree. So yes, it was awesome experience. (laughs) That's amazing. And so at that time, were you you were just stationed in France, right? You weren't traveling around as much, but I can imagine in Europe, there's always the opportunity to travel quite a bit by train, right? Well, you know, this program was so delightful because it was made for international people. So we would go for periods of time. And then this is again, pre-COVID, but we did some online. And then there were two universities in the US that we would do weekend compressed sessions. Uh, And it was during the time that I was traveling internationally for work. So I was able to kind of combine some of that. uh, But that's why it was so appealing to me. It was not a big deal to hop the pond, as we say, right? (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. And so did that study of taste, did that lead you into studying what happens when you travel? Yes, because you have to choose, of course, a deep dive, a dissertation. And Two of my neuroscience folks, really, probably I give credit to, one was a Mayo Clinic doctor, okay. and he said, you know, if you really want to study resilience, because I was really fascinated on how to use food as resilience. We know mm-hmm. it's calories. We know, as, as in your work, it rebuilds the body. But I was really fascinated by some people that seem more resilient than others. And that's when he said, you know, you could st- study travel resilience because your saliva drops 30 to 50%. And he said, there's a neuroscience aspect to travel with that. So, and then another neuroscientist in France, because I Mm -hmm. said, I want to understand why people like what they like and why we can't break the code about why, you know, we can get them to eat healthier. And he said, it's not about your taste bud. It's about the quality of your saliva. And that's when I'm like, oh my heavens, I've been in this field for 40 years and no one's talked about saliva like this. (laughs) No, it's not, it's not talked about at all. I mean, you go to a regular physician's office, no one says anything. Let me talk to you about your saliva. Right. And then I, and then if you don't mind, I'll I'll even maybe inspire people out there that this field is wide open. If this interests you, because there's three distinct silos in saliva, there's the saliva related to culinary, which is wonderful and, and important, you know, food combining and just the right spice mix and all that. I mean, that's legitimate, right? That's mm-hmm. how we love our food. Then there's a silo of saliva, which is the medical diagnosis of xerostomia, dry mouth. And, and they don't even talk to the culinary people, interestingly enough, right? They're yeah. really trying to find the pharma meds at this point to say, how can we really return this? Because dry mouth is so significant. I know I'm, you know, you're, you well-educated your audience, but it's just not only for oral care, but our immune system and all that. Then there's a third silo, which is really exploding and it's biomarkers. We now recognize, which actually goes back to Hippocrates, which is kind of interesting. He said blood and spittle as saliva was called Uh are brothers. And then the Western world just went for blood. And yet many of the traditional Chinese medicine and Ayurvedic medicine stay with 
really understanding what saliva does for the body and the nervous system, which I know you're an expert on. So I find it curious that these three silos of people are busy doing their work, but I'd love us all to talk, come to the table and really see what we can do to understand resilience and longevity and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Well, especially right now, there's so much research going into longevity and how can we health hack or biohack, but yes. how do we push the limits and really maximize the quality of time that we're on earth while we're pushing the limits of how long we can live as well. So yeah, well put. I, yeah, it's it's such a vital, important um, field right now. So how does this all relate to traveling? Because yes. you, you hear out there like pilots may have a shorter lifespan and you so you have to wonder what is the impact of traveling? Let's you know, traveling in general and even plane versus car versus train, how does that impact your health, especially if you're a traveler like I am? Yeah. Yeah. Well, in fact, why don't we take a, a dive inside our body? Sure. <laughs> um, and this is really, again, like you say, we often don't think about the physiologic response that our body has to go through when you go into what the neuroscience people call the tube, which is the mm -hmm. airplane. We'll start with that. And I think all of us recognize that there's a compressed, right? There's a change of air pressure and that changes our, our body's response. And that's a fun one. So I'll go into that in a second. Then secondly, we know that it's extremely dry. In fact, they say that the air circulation in a plane is drier than the Sahara Desert, which is even wow. more bizarre, right? So our body goes through compensations there. And then the third is what probably really, I did not know until this study, mm -hmm. is that jet engine noise vibration is extremely okay. stressful for the nervous system. And I always like to say, um, I, I did early work with the Navy SEALs and, and you know, you always think of them so highly trained and they're always mm -hmm. put into that position where they're hyper arousal, right? They're, um, yes. I should say, nervous system are on high alert. Mm -hmm. And it's often said that most of us don't recognize it. I mean, some of us I know are anxious travelers, so we definitely have that connection. But those that aren't don't even realize that they're doing that. And fourth is what you're speaking about, which is also a field that's being talked quite a bit about is the amount of metabolites that are what they call degassing. So as jet fuel is being released by the plane, it does filter into the cabin. And our bodies are so wonderfully made, as you well know, for natural detox. We just mm -hmm. detox every single day. But it, it's extremely stressful in that ride in a, in a flight that you're more exposed to more toxins. And then actually radiation. So when they do studies on people that use flight as a profession, they're very concerned about some of their longevity because of all four aspects, interestingly enough. And so that's what I looked at. I was like, okay, how do we equip the body, right? How do we put on the harness or the, you know, the oxygen to make the body strong? Yeah. And the first one's interesting because as our saliva drops when we travel, it sends the side of our nervous system that's parasympathetic, right? Relax, rest, digest, you know, even the sleep is on that one, right? Yep. We put that on pause, which means our immune and digestive systems go on pause, which means because we're sitting in the plane, our lymphatic system doesn't flow. So now instead of being this wonderful river, like our body is inside, nice and juicy on land, we go up in that plane and we become a sewer system very quickly, a swamp. And so part of the reason why on the other end, when you land, whether travel fatigue hits you, you know, you just feel not so good, or you do have digestive issues or headache or achiness, any of those we find is because we've been a sewer system for the length of flight. And so that's what I studied. I was like, okay, how can we course correct it? Can we go in and look at saliva and help the body produce more saliva? hoping that again, it stimulates the parasympathetic to go, oh, I'm like on land, I'll oscillate, I'll be awake and hyper arousal and I'll relax. And that's what I was able to find. So um, the good news is for those of you that are just like, oh, this travel conversation is icky. <laughs> good news is we have an amazing body and we can do a couple simple tricks and make a difference. 
Uh, and then one more thing, and then I'll be quiet for yeah, a second. Right, but I found you. it fascinating that the male clinic doctor said, and so hopefully I won't offend anybody with this, but he said, you know, the popping in your ears when you're up in the air, mm -hmm. he said, every cell in your body burps on a flight. Really? And yes. And so he said, that's extremely stressful on the mechanism within the cell, right? The energy production doesn't want this burst of, of you know, like he even, he even called it like tooting. He goes, you're just like when you, sometimes your digestive tract toots. He said, uh -huh. all of your cells. So your lungs are tooting, your brain is tooting. And he said, that's just not how we were made. It's too stressful. <laughs> that's interesting. So kind of along that lines then. So if you have the option to do a nonstop flight versus a layover, do you do nonstop? So, or do you do the layover to give yourself a break and do another like two shorter flights? Does that uh, excellent, matter? excellent question. Mm -hmm. And it really depends. What I love is that's bio individual. Some mm -hmm. of us do, I do better on a nonstop. Mm -hmm. And like I said, we're going to talk about some of the tools and tricks you can yeah. do because it does matter, not the length of time, which is bizarre because we've always okay. been told that in the flight. It's what happens when you're in flight. So some people like that rest period between because then they land and they can move around and they can maybe use the toilet in the airport and maybe mm -hmm. hydrate a little differently. So I say, you know, do what, what, what kind of feels intuitive to you, Okay. Um, you know, in terms of that, but we have tools and tricks for both types of travel. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I can imagine, so working on your saliva would probably, you need more to be more hydrated, but most people stop drinking on a plane because they don't want to have to get up, disturb the person next to them, especially if they're middle seat or uh, yes. window seat because they don't want to disturb anyone to have to go to the bathroom. So yes. first you're, dehy you're being dehydrated just by the conditions. Now you're specifically dehydrating yourself just so you don't have to, you know, <laughs> disrupt anyone. Right, right. And that's why this saliva stuff, I hope, will give us all encouragement because through saliva, I mean, we produce a liter and a half to two liters of saliva a day. Some of us more juicy than others. Mm -hmm. uh, and we recycle a liter of it. So when you think about hydration from inside the body, think that we're almost an ecosystem. So if we can figure out ways to produce saliva, which is as simply as sucking on like a lozenge when you're in the air, and there's all different types of brands. I'm not associated with one, mm -hmm. one particular one, yeah. but you know, as you know, there's Ricola and there's, um, you know, nature's way, uh, uh, you know, like zinc ones, whatever is really your passion. When you suck, think of like, and I know I'm speaking exactly Dr. Amy to the work you do, but you're suckling yourself, if you will, mm -hmm. which is very soothing for the body. And the best thing is not only do you produce saliva, but you actually are recycling that saliva. So it's like you almost have a hydration pump inside your body. So please know I'm a nutritionist that want you to drink water when you can, yeah. But I have set up for many of my executives that were traveling, same thing. They were like, I don't want to get out of my seat. I don't want to cause any ruckus. <laughs> so we have them hyperhydrate before they get on. Okay. And then do the lozenge as they're in there. And there's even things like bring a couple pickles along. Um, you know, we can do it through food. And interestingly enough, that's enough of a juiciness that keeps that, that water pump inside our bodies providing the function physiologically that make us happy. So are the pickles for the fact that they're juicy or are they stimulating something or both? Both, thank you. Okay. Yeah, interestingly enough, so you can think of you know apples and celery. In fact, I have a whole list mm -hmm. of what we call Cialagog foods, which okay. is sort of a fun word, huh? Saliva yeah. producing foods. And I'm happy to get that list to you sure. for your audience. But on there, you'll see there's some that are saliva producing and some that are saliva retention. Okay. And pickles end up being saliva producing. One is they are juicy, like you mm -hmm. said. And second, that pucker power, right? Most of them are in brine, which is a stimulation of the saliva. And that your body is happy when you're juicy. <laughs> That's fascinating. And this is a little aside, but when you run ultra marathons, so 26.2 miles or greater, especially in the hundred milers that I've run, they have pickles all the time. And usually you think of it for the salt, but I bet the benefits of the saliva really helps as well. And I never yes. even knew that. 
Yes. Oh no. Thank you for sharing that. I didn't even realize that, but yeah. you're right. I bet it's a one, two punch, right? Yeah. That's amazing. Okay. So finding, so lozenges, finding foods that produce saliva, or there anything else that people should start to yeah. consider? Yeah. And I really hope that again, some of the travelers, maybe for the summer, whether it's family or now that you've returned to business, mm -hmm. that we just think differently about not leaving it to chance. So this might sound a little humbug, but you know, just get used to having a travel bag. And in that travel bag, you might have two or three different sachets of tea that you like. We know that when you do citrus tea, mm -hmm. when you do even Tulsi tea or holy basil tea, mm -hmm or even anything uh, in the, um, oh, I just forgot, like a cranberry or pomegranate. Okay. Those are all, again, saliva producing uh, um, teas. So I have a couple sachets. So all you need to get from the flight attendant is a cup of hot water. Or if wow. you travel with your own water bottle, then wow. I would love for you to see, put in ginger, just a couple slices of ginger. You can do mint, you can do lemon, you can do lime. There's a wonderful researcher, if you're kind of wondering like, oh, she sounds like she's making this stuff up, <laughs> who studies uh, really unique hydration inside the body. And her name is Dr. Gina Bria, and she does the Hydration Foundation. And she has this beautiful website that lists why all these foods have been studied through, the, through time, right? That they show that not only are they beneficial because they're healthier, but that they really do provide a really unique function in the body and making the type of water that we take sticky to be in our cells. That's interesting. And you had mentioned something about you do hyperhydration before yeah. the flight. How do you how do you suggest that people do that so that when they get on the flight, they are just not running to the bathroom every 30 minutes? Yes, you are exactly right. So, and again, the luxury is we are talking kind of like um you know, pre-planning, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But the idea is uh, three hours before your flight, Okay. try to drink two cups of water. So 16 ounces okay. and in it, put a little bit of Himalayan sea salt. And then, right, then when you're in the airport waiting, now you've been through TSA. So you're mm -hmm. definitely there an hour before. Mm -hmm. And so do the same thing. Have a couple of glasses of water. This time you could put lime or maybe some of you are tea drinkers and you would rather have a little grapefruit tea or pomegranate tea. Mm -hmm. And then what'll happen is because you're hydrating for the cells mm -hmm. with these unique elements, you will have probably one bathroom break before you get on the plane, mm -hmm. but you should not have to go to the bathroom because it's water that's gonna be stored into your cells, which makes okay. your cells really happy. And the systemic water is what our kidneys feed off of, right? And yeah. so when cells are happy, they, they don't really produce a lot of extra coming out the kidneys. That's fascinating. And the Himalayan salt helps it absorb, correct? Yes, you're exactly yeah. right. In fact, I often say, and I bet some of your listeners um, already do this, but if you're on well water, oh, every day, thank your well. <laughs> yeah. Because it has delicious minerals. And of course, I'm sure you've tested the water to make sure you don't have things you don't want in there. But natural well water or spring water has just these delicious little minerals that make, again, the water sticky for our cells. Yeah. So. Oh, that's fascinating. So then, okay, so that we kind of covered how you can kind of prepare for flying. Now in the flight, we talked about lozenges or snacking on anything. When you get off the flight, do you, should you do anything specific to rehydrate, start drinking a lot of water again? What should yeah, you do? right. What's interesting, and, 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 you know, I'm happy if we want to go this direction as well, yeah. you know, on the plane, we, I would say there's a fair bit of um, information now. Now, mm -hmm. it does depend on the length of flight and the timing. I get it. Okay. But because of what happens physiologically, for those of us that can rest, um, you know, in a way, take a break from eating too much food. Mm -hmm. We do get a better outcome because sometimes, and maybe again, your patients always ask you this, like, we know we're eating nutrition for all those delicious nutrients. We often forget that there's trash produced after we metabolize. Mm -hmm. And so when you think of that in a plane now, you're seated and you're, you know, if you're eating a lot, your body's grabbing all those delicious nutrients, but because of the nervous system, that's not quite engaged for good digestion you're also storing up the trash and that's very 
hard on the body. So what I mm -hmm. often tell people is if you can, as much as possible, minimize what you eat on the plane. So when you land, you're going to break the fast, right? Oh. And in this case, let's be very thoughtful about the foods that we put in to help the body move the lymphatic system and take out the trash. And so they tend to be, I mean, soups are wonderful. Juice and smoothies, as long as they're not just crazy like Oreo cookie smoothies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, thankfully, so many wonderful airports now have good variety. And then often the hotel that you arrive at, or if it's, you know, headed on a vacation with family, you're, you're passing stops along the way that you can really hydrate with good quality fruits and vegetables, then that's the best way to break the fast. And then of course, as you well know, get out into the sun if that's reasonable and move your body because that's just naturally how the rhythm of our body works after you've been in the tube to acclimate to the new area. Okay. So now can you touch on like after flying, there's this phenomenon where people often feel very tired or fatigued. We can call it travel yeah. fatigue. Can you touch on that and what sure. is known about it? Yes. And I really want to give incredible credit to a physician out of Australia named Dr. Stephen Simpson. And uh, maybe some of you caught the news in the last couple of weeks where they are going to do the longest flight ever. And it's from, oh goodness, I know it starts in Australia and I can't, I know it's past London. Yeah. <laughs> so I think it's gonna be something crazy like 19 hours. Well, he's involved in designing what that looks like inside the cabin for those people. But what he shared is that when travel fatigue as it's called now different, uh, the term jet lag, we're retiring and calling it travel fatigue oh. because it's almost like a, a soup of symptoms, right? So sometimes it is that digestion, you know, some people just can't eliminate or they feel like they have heartburn or headache or muscle aches, or again, you just, you're just out of sorts. And so he says the travel fatigue is two things. One is that the cells have been so dehydrated and think of if any of you've done yard work outside and you haven't kept up matching your water intake. You just mm -hmm. feel just so lethargic, right? Well, he says that really happens after flight physiologically because even though you feel like you haven't done anything but sit in that chair, your whole system has been like a Navy SEAL. It's been high alert. It's been worrying about the environment and you're uncomfortable in the seat. And that flight, you know, hopefully you have a smooth flight, but you're making all these micro movements in your body that's keeping you upright. We don't think of that often, but your neck and your spine. And he says, it's really like gardening in your yard. It's stressful. Mm -hmm. And so part of the travel fatigue when you land is that you've had all these micro movements in your body mm -hmm. and you haven't been able to keep those cells plump and happy. Okay. And so travel fatigue is from that. And then second, it is this idea that, you know, hopefully none of us have had to be on a neighborhood watch for hours, but it is that we are in the stimulation. All of our senses are on high alert. And remember that first one is that jet engine noise vibration yeah. uh, is really putting our body in like, oh my goodness, what's happening, what's happening? And so he says, those two things contribute to travel fatigue. And then each of us kind of have probably an organ system that maybe is hereditary, it's just weaker. You know, my family tends to be digestive system. So that's my first system to, you know, go out of business <laughs> when I travel, <laughs> yeah. uh, right? I have other people that get more headaches and, and achiness. And of course, then we have to be very careful with DVTs, right? The idea that you form clots in your legs. So I'd say number one is be just very aware of what your family history or what your travel history is like. And then um, having said that, then we can talk a little bit about looking at thinking saliva when travel and then equipping your digestion and immune system for heavy lifting while, while they're on board. And that makes sense. And do you know if there's any data or any information when it comes to traveling overseas? So there are 13 hour flights and even longer flights. Is, yeah. there, is that really, does it, ex, is it exponential in terms of its impact on your body? Yeah, yeah great, great question. Interestingly enough, 
yes and no. <laughs> of course, yes, because it's a longer flight. Yeah. And it would make sense that you're seated more, right? Mm -hmm. But the no part is really fascinating. And that's by a physician right here in Arizona, oh. a biological medicine doctor, Dr. Jeff Drobot, really dived into this and said, again, it's a physiologic response in the tube. So it's what happens once we get onto the plane. So it doesn't matter duration. It matters that it's just an intense situation that's extremely abnormal for the body. And that that is what really travel fatigue is. And, um, and that's why, again, you know, when, when I dove into the travel resilience and created a nutrition kit for that, it was to really cover bases. Uh, and then long, a longer flight, probably it's disruption in sleep. And I know you've covered that several times, you know, what does that look like to help the body get into some kind of sleep? Mm -hmm. And I love the idea of imagining power naps. So, you know, I took a lot of European trips that were 10 hours plus and try to think it's kind of goofy for some of us Westerners, but every 90 minutes to two hours, imagine that you're going to move your body, hydrate, hopefully, and then, or take a rest, right? Okay. Okay. So. And just cycle through those. That's yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now, if you're going far, you know, overseas and you're going through several time zones to the east versus several time zones to the west, is there any difference physiologically, symptoms wise? I know sometimes people feel yeah. better going one direction versus the other, but is there anything out there in the research regarding that? Yeah, you know, and again, the credit goes to Dr. Stephen Simpson. We know that the circadian rhythm is actually on 20 hours, you know, our wake sleep cycle, interestingly enough. So certainly if you're moving forward in time zones, mm -hmm. it tends to be harder on the body because we're, you know, we're, we're engaging, we're trying to speed up actions because we're in that location for meals and for sleep. And yet inside the body goes, wait a minute, <laughs> this is off. So there is something to it. I, uh, what I, I'm going to quote Dr. Stephen Simpson a bit, because he said, you know, that most of that research is a bit outdated because we never really looked at physiologically what was happening to the body. So he thinks there's a mindset of jet lag or there's a mindset of traveling east to west versus west to east. And so I, I like to challenge people in that, you know, yeah. like kind of pretend you're your best friend. You know, how do you yeah. really think about travel? Do you really get angst about it because you're anticipating having jet lag or anticipating a rough east to west. Uh, and then, you know what, blow it up. Like don't have, don't have those thoughts, change your thoughts yeah. and see yeah. if you travel differently. Interesting. Fabulous. Okay. This is great information. Um, now we've been talking a lot about planes or there, is there any difference when you travel like on a train or in car for like a road trip? Yeah. And, you know, uh, we've spent a bit of time saying these micro movements, right, mm -hmm. that our body does. And with more and more people during the pandemic, quite frankly, that embarked on certainly in the U.S., right, um, car travel uh, and then, you know, trains as well for vacations versus flying. We find that travel fatigue does exist. And, um, you know, I know you yeah, I'd love to hear a story from you because you traveled mm -hmm. so much. But it is interesting when none of us, no surprise, especially car travel, we're constantly on alert, right? It's all those other drivers <laughs> or the exit we need. And then we forget that every time you change lanes or just the, the road, and that's, you know, think of life from a nervous system perspective, right? Mm -hmm. It's really stressful. Here we have our radar up. And so travel fatigue does exist in cars and trains. And part of my work now is working actually with some truckers to see if what I've done with the nutrition kit can actually help them in their days. They, they're 14 hours in that yeah. truck. And, yeah. um, and we're getting some exciting, you know, promising look at how we can help them with their travel fatigue. And that's true. When I think back about when I was training for ultra marathons and I'd get it to 50, 100 miles. And then I, at the same time, I was also traveling around the Southwest doing photography. I remembered being more tired after a drive to go camp somewhere and photograph nature than if I had done a 50 mile run. Like oh it was, and I gosh. preferred doing a 50 mile run because I felt just, I felt good afterwards. But when I was yeah. driving four hours to get somewhere, six hours to get somewhere, I'm like, I was exhausted. 
is yes. really interesting. Yes. Oh gosh, that's a great story. Thank you for that. Yeah. And what we find, and again, you know, I got to give credit to the physicians I work with that say, you know, something simple you can do, whether you're driving on a train or even on a plane, mm -hmm. yeah. is to, again, kind of take the body in segments. And I always like to see three segments, right? So you've got your head to your shoulders, you've got your torso, and then you've got your legs. And they talk about squeezing, you know, kind of muscle tension and then mm -hmm. relax, muscle tension and relax. Because for those of you maybe well studied in the lymphatic system, we don't have a pump in the lymphatic system like we do the heart. And as we said earlier, lymphatic system is just easier for me to remember it like a sewer system, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it pools until we move. And so a simple thing you can do is to sit in your chair or to, when you're driving is to just, you know, tighten up parts of your body and then relax it. And it does, it is kind of like a squeezing of a, of a tube. You're going to be moving things through, yeah. which is what your body prefers. Yeah, that's amazing. So all of this is fabulous. And I know you have this jet renewal kit. So can you talk about that? What's included in it? Because I know you're using these to help people. So they minimize the travel fatigue. They feel better. They can get off a plane, feel great, can participate in their life. So can you go through what that's sure. all about? Yeah. And just like what we've been talking about, I mm -hmm. realized for my, myself <laughs> traveling and executives, how can I make this easy for people? Because you don't mm -hmm. always find the foods that you need. And so I put together a, a kit. In fact, I might even have one. Oh, Kevin, I do. <laughs> oh, and that. I didn't plan that. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know. I guess you I can put it right in front of my face. Yes, yeah. there you are. But, yeah, but what I'll show you is is probably this is easier to talk through. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a three parts. So there's three parts, three sachets. And the idea, much like we said, is right before you get on, what can we do to the body to physiologically equip it for saliva? Okay. And for just preparing the digestion and immune. So I have folks take actually a lozenge, if you can see oh, yeah. that little white lozenge, uh -huh. and it's a chewable and everything's food-based. So it's essential okay. oil, lemon, ginger, and peppermint. Oh, and nice. maybe even when I say those words, some people feel saliva coming in their mouth. Uh -huh. And then we have them take elderberry, which uh, I think many studies are out and you're probably um, already kind of equipping all your patients with that. Mm -hmm. And elderberry, I like to think of it as a personal trainer for the immune system. So it doesn't hit the immune system over the head to get boosted. It says, hey, come on now. You might have to have a little more action here. You might have to be on alert. Mm -hmm. And then mid-flight, the same thing. You're going to do a lozenge. Okay. okay. And then you're going to help your body take out the trash. And that is with broccoli sprouts. Broccoli sprouts, interestingly enough, have you know some big names, but I have a feeling your audience is well-versed, glutathione and sulforaphane. Yeah. And it really equips the cells to render all of the metabolites that are they're exposed to and the toxins, right? We talked about the degassing and radiation. And they blunt that response, kind of like, I think of it as sort of like a fire shield. You know, it helps protect the cell. And then when you land again, you're going to take, uh, oops, I don't know why that's, uh, also you take a, an elderberry and then you take mm -hmm. a glutathione. Okay. So the idea is all phases of flight that you're supporting the body physiologically to say, it's no different than being on earth. It's okay. You can chill. So it all has the effect on the nervous system. That's amazing. And so people can get these kits and that way they can have it and they do this during the flight. Yes. And it's okay to do this. Like, let's say you fly one day, you have to turn around and do another flight the next day. Is it okay to have a kit for each of those flights? Yes. Thank you for that. Great question. Okay. And well, by design, because it's food-based, so it's actually food. If mm -hmm. you poured open the capsule of elderberry or uh -huh. poured open the capsule of broccoli sprouts, you would taste that. Oh, so you think of it as just eating. So if you want to do it by food, believe me, you can. Okay. Uh, just as a bowl of elderberry and a bowl of broccoli sprouts before um, you get on the flight. Uh, but we just put it in capsules. So you're right, no contraindications to medications. Uh, probably if there happens to be a food allergy to elderberry or broccoli sprouts, don't do it. But I have not found anything to contraindicate for it. We did get the global global inform a sports certification because we work with a lot of Olympic athletes. 
And we wanted to make sure there was nothing and any bleed of any banned substances or any issues. Uh, so people can feel good about that as well. Yeah. Oh, this is great. Well, wonderful. So where can people <laughs> order these? Yeah. So we have a website. It's mm -hmm. called Jet Renewal Kit. Okay. Dot com. Okay. And what you'll find, because of course we're right in the middle of a platform uh, move. Mm -hmm. So you'll see a button that says product inquiry, which mm -hmm. would normally say buy, right? Yeah. Product inquiry will come directly to me. Okay. And then I'm right now hand processing it just until we get the platform spit ready. You know, nothing's yes. worse than when something breaks before you start. Yeah, so yeah, so, I, and, I, and I welcome any questions. My, okay. my email is my name. So P-A-T-T-I mm -hmm. at jetrenewalkit.com. That's wonderful. Oh, I appreciate it. This is so much good information. I'm so glad <laughs> we had you on again. Oh, any other you. last thing that we didn't cover? You know, thank you for that question. I would just say that when you think about resilience, uh, and again, I know I, I, it's so fun to talk to you because I know you and I <laughs> are in the same sandbox. Mm -hmm. Really try to think of life from your nervous system perspective. It's there to protect you, but at times you need to tell it, it's okay, I've got it. Be mm -hmm. calm, be resilient, find peace in my day. And so, and think of that, that might be just simply getting your saliva up, right? Yeah, that's amazing. I, I need to start thinking about saliva more and more. I, I kind of, it's gone off my radar, but I need to think about it more. And this is a good reminder. So thank you. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> um, I really appreciate you joining us again on Saturday. Um, thank you for your time. It really means sure. a lot to no, me. No, thank you. I love speaking for your wellness group. <laughs> Wonderful. And thank you all for joining us today. Please take advantage of Dr. Patty Milligan's uh, Jet Renewal Kit. Go check it out because, you know, as you're starting to move around, it can help you whether you're flying, you're on a road trip or other more other mode of transportation. So thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again next week. Take care now. Right. Bye. And I'll be corny. Happy travels. <laughs> <laughs>